G'day folks, this is Ed from Ed Systems out here on location at the scrapyard I'm not sure what make and model this air conditioner was but there's two of the biggest hermetic reciprocating compressors I've ever seen and thanks to my friend who runs the joint these are now mine with a bit of luck I'll get time to strip these down and then next week I believe they're a reciprocating compressor they don't appear to be a rotary design all the controls been stripped out. A couple of nice fuses, one anyway. These compressors are built by Bristol, USA. I have a Texas Instruments overload protector, which plugs in up here. And these are the main three phase wires. They're all three phase, obviously. Not sure what current they're rated at. 380 volt, 415 volt, 141 amps. Huh? LRA. Yeah, 141 amps. Oh, Takoom's refrigerant accumulator. G'day folks. These are my Bristol thematic compressors that I was talking about earlier. Not sure what horsepower rating they are, they're rated at 140 full load amps, so it's got to be a lot. A little Texas Instruments overload protectors on them. Look up to this point here. Came out of a big package unit. Well, I got the top off one of them. The steel's about 5 sixteenths of an inch thick. A hell of a lot of work to do with that 9 inch grinder, although it didn't eat much of the wheel. Basically, it's a six cylinder radial compressor. Six individual cylinders arranged in a radial configuration on a single crankshaft. Under this shield, if I can find something to pop it off. That's the motor stator underneath. There we go. And that's the motor right there. A bit sticky. I don't know whether this is the bad one or not. Oh, it's been rewound. Apparently one of these compressors is bad, I'm sure that's why they scrapped this package unit. It's the same package unit that the uh, cycle reversing valve I showed came from. Okay, I just found this little uh, lump of pulverized aluminium sitting on top of the cylinder head here. I'm guessing that's not a good sign. Definitely wouldn't have come from my grinding work. And the way it's been ground up, I'd say she's thrown a rod and continued to run on five cylinders or so for a very long amount of time. Unfortunately, I think this is the bad one. But, it's not to say I'm not going to cut the other one open and see if I can run it off external power. I'd say the presence of what would be probably all of the Conrod big ends ground up in the stump is a pretty bad thing for this compressor. It's not looking good. It's interesting to see how these fail though. You can just keep running even though it's something shattered. The motor will keep spinning, especially because it's a tandem system. One compressor will end up doing all the work, while this one here self-destructs. There's a splatter of aluminium particles up there. I'll have to get the end housing off to see just what it's like inside the crankcase. But looks alright on the outside, but that place is a bit rooted. It's always advisable to wear eye protection when you're stripping something like this down. This little uh, discharge of refrigerant here trapped under the bolt sprayed me in the face with oil. I mean, I've got goggles on now, but if I didn't have goggles on, well, I'd be looking for an uh, eye wash station. So, be very wary of undoing bolts on anything like this because refrigerant has its way of 
working into the tiniest of places. Well, that is just a catastrophic failure. Every single conrod has just been pulverised. See that one down there? That one in there is down to the gudgeon pin. I've never seen anything that bad in a compressor, but when they're allowed to run for a prolonged amount of time after a little bit of damage is done, everything else just follows. Well, there you have it, folks. That's one fucked up compressor. Every single rod is smashed and ground into oblivion. Some of the pistons are jammed in the bores, some of them just fell out like these ones. Crankshaft badly scored. Bearing journal down here is just worn right down. The rest of this thing can just go straight to the electric motor scrap bin. Just fetch a few dollars. The motor itself is fine. Just that there's no conrods left, so it couldn't do its thing. Time to get into the next one. Well, this is the second compressor, and... Well, I guess it didn't like having to compensate for the one with the bad conrods, and... It all just incinerated its windings. It is cooked. Housing's full of soot and residue. Whatever refrigerant they recovered from it obviously wasn't worth using. Very bad burnout. Again, I'll pull this one out and just check the crankcase. Maybe it suffered the same fate as the one before. Except this one may have jammed up and subsequently burnt the windings. I'm guessing these are uh, overload protectors are good for surge control and single phasing, but obviously it didn't save it this time. This compressor is in much better nick than the other one. Obviously it's still got all its conrods intact. But I'm not, don't really have time to set it up on an electric motor to drive it. I can show you how the conrods operate by rotating it by hand. Sort of like a radial aircraft engine, except this one's being driven by an electric motor and the cylinders are just compressing gas instead of being combustion chambers. I think this one here, I'll pull the conrod and pistons out and turn it into a little display souvenir. And the rest of it can go in the electric motor bin. These are the valve assemblies from each cylinder. They're sitting there like so. The retaining ring on top of them. So, it's one of the heads. Bolts down. Basically when it's running, gas is drawn in through this inner, this ring here. This is the inlet valve itself. They're just little reed valves. Suction forces the valve to lift up and gas is drawn into the chamber. Under compression it's forced out through these inner slots, through this little diaphragm valve here, into the head chamber, and then out through the discharge manifold off to the